Hello everyone, my name is Christian, welcome to my hobby blog. Today we are doing part 3 of the Zatoichi watch through, movie 6 through 9. Uh, number 6 is Zatoichi and the Chest of Gold, 7 is Zatoichi's Flying Sword, number 8 is Fight Zatoichi Fight, and then the last one, number 9, Adventures of Zatoichi. Today we have Leon returning with us under Nightmare 24, welcome back. Hey, how's everyone doing? This is Leon, Undead Nightmare 24, and I'm joining uh, Christian's Hobby Blog here. We're going to discuss films 6 through 9 of the Satoichi series, and I'm excited to get into it. One thing I want to mention before we go into any of these movies, it kind of shocked me when I was getting my notes ready. All four of these movies came out the same year, 1964, and they're all great. <laughs> They're all yeah. <laughs> really good, and I'm like, God, they really, like, knew what they were doing, making these films, and they're all totally different. Like, they do not adhere to the formula that I discussed in last episodes. Yeah, they have a different feel to each one, like you said, and they're really solid, all of them. I, all around, I I had enjoyment through, through every film, and they do have a lot of humor as well, which I noticed. <laughs> there was a lot, that I liked yeah. Throughout the films. <laughs> So, do you want to go into the first one? Is that to be too sure. chest of gold? So, first of all, the, apparently I didn't finish the uh, notable cast, but did you notice who was in this film again? Yes, I did. Lone Wolf and Cub himself, and I won't pronounce his name. Tommy Sabiro Wakayama. <laughs> there, there you go. He plays <laughs> not Yoshiro, but Jushiro. Not totally different at all. <laughs> <laughs> I, never, I never noticed that till you said it. That is funny. His, I really like his character in this movie because he's just way more badass. But I loved the last one. I guess it was two that he was in. Yeah, because the older brother dynamic. Yeah, and two, he's like yeah. super somber and serious. And in this one, he's like, you know, ripping people with his whip and like, Dragging Zatoichi behind a horse. It was awesome. Yeah, he's very more aggressive in this one. And he straight up wants to challenge him throughout these film, this film more. I think more aggressive. I really like the intro for this movie. Where Zatoichi is in like pure darkness. And you see people running out of it. And he's like just striking them down. While the opening credits play. Yeah, that was so cool. <laughs> and the whistling sound is awesome too. That whistling noise in the background. Oh <laughs> man, that that got me going in the film right away. I'll just go ahead and say I forgot all of these movies when I first watched them <laughs> because I remember Chester Gold. I was like, I remember that being really good, and like the other ones, I just had no recollection. I remember there was a baby one, which is number eight. And I remember that was like pretty good because Lone Wolf and Cub and. You know, his brother, mm -hmm. in real life brother, was probably like, hey, I want to make a series on that. We're going to call it Lone Wolf and Cub. Like, that's what I assume is where the idea came from. But, uh, yeah, this movie is pretty awesome. But, like, mm -hmm. so first off in the movie, in terms of the story, is that he travels back to Itakewa, which I guess is the town where he and Hirate fought. Two years ago, according to dialogue in this movie. And he reminisces about... Um, no, it's not Hirate. Someone else. But he reminisces to the grave about a fight he had between two Yakuza gangs. The Ioka and the Sasagawa, which is from movie one. And he asks yeah, he uh... kills the guy. And he's like super sad about it. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't. I didn't get why he killed him. Is it like a reason? Because he, like you said, he feels really bad. And did they have a bond? I I really didn't get the whole uh, layout on that one. So apparently, it was that he just was in the wrong place at the right, wrong time. He had no uh, connection to either of those gangs. He was just there, saw him killing people, and was like, "Oh, he must be a bandit," and tried to kill him or something. 
and mm. he realized like nobody knew who this guy was <laughs> like at all and they were like oh whatever like he tried to help us that's cool and then Zatu is just like, did I just kill someone who wasn't even involved in this fight? Like, that's why he visits the grave every year, it seems. So he's trying mm -hmm. to uh, repent for it. But his sister, not Zatuichi's sister, but the dead guy's sister overhears Ichi talking about that. And she's like, oh, that's my brother's murderer. But, you know, it's just a blind guy. We get that whole thing again. <laughs> yeah. And she begins to, like, stalk him, huh? Like, follow him everywhere. She's just, like, in the bushes, hiding out. And keeping her eye on him. She, like, real she's mysterious. She's a camera woman. <laughs> <laughs> she's just following him around the camera, I guess. Yeah, it's real odd, man. Okay, the next part is probably a hilarious scene where uh, a village... Uh, got all the money together to pay off like a tax or something to the lord and it's like 17 mm, yeah. villages came together after three years of drought and famine and like all this stuff and they all come together with a thousand rio which is a lot don't forget mm. that satsuichi was paid three of that for his life in the first movie and he's like wow like, this ain't much <laughs> but like yeah. it was a lot for that lord who wanted to hire him so like a thousand, like that's a pretty big deal. And that's obviously a, you know, part of the title is a chest of gold. But like, they invite him over to drink and he's just like dancing. And he has some sick dance moves. <laughs> he's just like having a good time. <laughs> he's, play he's playing the drums. Yeah, he's like, he drinks, <laughs> he like chugs three bowls of sake. And it's like just railing on the drums. So I was like, this is so fun. Like, this is what I like. I don't like uh, movie uh, three, was it? Where his master uh, is like abusing him. <laughs> He's like blind professor. bastard. <laughs> Tells him. I disown you. You mean nothing. Yeah. See, I like when Zatuichi gets drunk and plays the bongos. <laughs> Whatever drums those were. And, and he goes off and the words in the songs are hilarious, man. They're just <laughs> out of nowhere. Yeah, isn't he singing about himself? Yeah. Because I remember at the end of the film, he's singing that same song, but it's, like, sad now? Or something? <laughs> like, it's a cool twist. And then there's, a, there's an old man in the back just all going off. He's just going with a beat. Like, it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Which it is. It's, it's really cool, but... Yeah, after that... <laughs> It's just humor like that that gets me going in the films. It keeps it light, which I really appreciate. It can't all just be sad or comedy. It, it's a great mix. And this movie really does it because right after that, Zatoichi like sits down on a box and is like, I'm going to sit here now and rub my feet because <laughs> I'm <laughs> tired. I've been walking all day and I'm hungover because I hung out with this village. We got a thousand Rio for the tax man. And he's like sitting there. And a couple bandits show up. Because I think the chest rolled down the hill. And that's where he mm -hmm. found it. And, he's all uh, sitting on it. Yeah, he's just like chilling. Like eating lunch. Yeah. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> it's hilarious. And Stuffing a bunch of, his mouth with rice. Yeah. <laughs> it's like all <laughs> over his face. But like. A bunch of bandits show up and he's like, what do you want? I'm just sitting here on this rock. And he's like, that's a chest underneath you. Get off of there. They were taking it. And he's like, what's in it? It's like, uh, nothing. He's like, okay. He kills the bandits. I think someone else Oh, he's else sitting comes. down. He's yeah. sitting down. He, he doesn't get up. Just it's like his him. lunch in his lap. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm like, wow. Again, he's badass. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did they grab it? I can't remember how they took the gold. Uh, I'm not sure either, to tell you the truth. I think as he was fighting, they took it. Yeah, because a lot of them run off. They see what he can do and they just run off. But what's really sad is that right after that, all the villagers blame him. And are like roughing him up. And he's like, yeah. I'm blind. How am I going to take a, like, gold is heavy. <laughs> he's like, there's <laughs> no way I could have grabbed that and gone away without anyone seeing me. 
And they're like, ah, you're faking being blind and like all this stuff. And he promises to fix it and finds it, you know, all that. And he goes to the back roads yeah. to avoid government officials and finds a woman who I think is a, uh, from another movie. She plays a different character. They recycle a lot of actors and actresses. I noticed that. I noticed that. <laughs> yeah. And they're both like, why are you in this illegal road? And it's like, I'm blind. I just wandered here. And it's like, uh, what? <laughs> She's just like confused. And he's like, yeah. you can see. Why are you here? What excuse do you have? It's hilarious. They even hit him over the head. Wasn't his head bleeding? Like oh, yeah. those guys, those farmers, when they're roughing him up. Like it's I real, so real sad. Because he did nothing. He just walked in. He's like, hey, who's got rice? And they're like, hey, it was you. You took the gold. And he's like, what? <laughs> so I was they're slapping him. And... Like, and he didn't kill them either. He could easily have killed all of them. And he didn't. Because he knows. That's what I was saying same. throughout my, my mind. It was like, he could kill him at any time. He just doesn't want to. Aoichi's a good man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he is. Anyone slapping me, you know they're gonna get that blade. Especially if I'm Ichi. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, on a, another humorous scene I got here is there's there's a girl in a hot bath. And oh, Ichi pops yeah. up from the hot <laughs> bath. And he's, like I I spit out my drink on that part. I'm not lying. Yeah, she's just like totally <laughs> nude and like. <laughs> I think it zooms in, like, the scene starts with a couple of dudes, like, looking at her, and she doesn't yeah, yeah. know, and she's, like, topless. We get some side boob action, which is the most nudity yeah. we've had yet, just to mock, mm -hmm. because these are, like, pretty, like, family-friendly movies, mm -hmm. until we get the hoses of blood. But, like, she's sitting there, <laughs> and she's like, oh, I hate being around men, or something. She says some comment. And then you just yeah. see a figure rise out of the water. He's like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> he's like, it's okay, I'm blind. I could still massage you. Yeah, let me, <laughs> and he's like, grabs the air. I think he says that. Does he say for massage? Yeah, he was like, do you want me to massage you? And she was like, sir, this is a Wendy's. This is so inappropriate. <laughs> she doesn't actually say that, but. He's like, same. it's okay, I'm blind. <laughs> I totally forgot about that. That was so funny. Yeah, that's, that scene was hilarious, man. <laughs> it was like this really peaceful scene. He's like scene. spitting out water out of his mouth when he comes up. It's like... <laughs> oh, yeah, he splashes the bandits who are watching. He's like, I wouldn't uh, stoop so low to spy on a naked woman. And he like swipes his hand and like douses the people in water. And it's like this thin slit. So he's like really accurate with water. Which is hilarious. Yeah. It's like a human water gun. <laughs> <laughs> Has a huge uh, water blaster. Uh, that part was hilarious, man. Um, there's a lot of, like, back and forth stuff we've seen in, like, every movie. It was like, here, there's the conflict. We need to resolve conflict. And it's like, you get the same scenes over and over again. Yeah. I really liked when they brought out those lanterns. I don't know when he's fighting guys like on a mountain. Oh, yeah. yeah. They have like lanterns real lit up. Mm. Um, there's a scene where he and Lone Wolf are betting. And everyone's getting like really mad that uh, Ichi keeps winning. Because he's like doubling his stakes every time. So his pile starts with like two coins originally. And it doubles to four, then eight, then 16, 32. And it's at, around the time when he's at 32, he's like... I'm not going to bet anymore. And one guy, I think the innkeeper, or I think it's Lone Wolf, actually. He's like, hey, let's go one-on-one -on, -one on this dice game. And Ichi's like, okay. And so they do it. And they bet yeah. on like a coin toss or something. Because uh, Lone Wolf throws the coin in the air. Yeah. Stabs it through like the middle. Up. And it falls down because it's like a square in the middle. And then Ichi cuts it in half. <laughs> it's like, how the <laughs> heck did he know? <laughs> and it's it just shows you how he tops his enemies. They do something, but he has the upper hand. It's gonna you're gonna get some more amazing out of him, out of Ichi. 
Oh, there's another part I wanted to talk about, a humorous part. It's where uh, Ichi has a woman in the room and he tells her that she's beautiful from her smell. But she's very, she's like an attractive girl with a mole on her face. And he's like telling her, oh, you're so beautiful and <laughs> all this stuff. Yeah, I can't really remember. I thought that who, part was hilarious. Was. was that the same woman who he was in the bath with? I don't know. She's just company or a, a masseur. I don't know what she is. No, that 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 lady was pretty. This one was like, <laughs> she had a mole, giant mole on her face, and she's all he's all telling her, "You're beautiful. You smell great." And and she's like, "Oh, thank you." She's blushing, and then you look at her giant mole, and then her oh yeah, face ain't very attractive either. And I just tell, <laughs> I guess his senses were off there, or he had too much sake. I don't know. Because those those farmers take a real, real torture scene. You see there where they're getting whipped and beaten and. Savagely beaten and all that. And then there's a there's a real cool uh, fog setting in the background when he's fighting these guys. I just I was like, wow, man, I love the setting. Yeah, it reminds me of uh, at the end of number two, maybe number three. No, it's number three, where they're fighting in the fog because that's when he's with his uh, master and kills him. And like they really use fog well mm -hmm. in these movies. Yeah, it re returns. That's what I mean. The settings are so like, so like awesome, man. Like you know, you could sense a showdown before it's even gonna happen <laughs> just by the scenery. Juicy, G I can't say that name, but you know, Lone Wolf and Cub. Uh, he tells him to to meet him at a temple for a showdown. You got Lone Wolf and Cub versus Ichi. What more could you ask for? And it's the second time too, because we got it in movie two or whatever. And we're now getting it again. And I really love this scene because, like, it's way more, like, dangerous, like, stunt-wise. Like, I don't know how uh, Shintaru Katsu, who plays Atuichi, did this. Because uh, Lone Wolf throws it, not throws, but rips uh, his neck, like, into a sling and drags him from a horse. And, like, you see Shintaru Katsu's face. And they're, like, going up and down this dirt path while he's uh like by his neck <laughs> and i'm like how did they film that <laughs> most i've seen uh ichi get brutalized in a film yeah because a few movies ago at the end of it i think he is covered in blood and it's like dirt and like all that but like he doesn't get dragged around like that like it was shocking i forgot that scene until i started watching it again i was like oh yeah how do they do this again? <laughs> this is when I want the supplements, because they really don't have many behind the scenes of the individual movies. They have none, actually. It's just like overarching supplements. Yeah, that would have been cool to see, like, behind the scenes, man. Such a, like, a stunt-filled scene. You're like, wow. I, I've never seen nothing like that. Like that, you know, brutal and showed up front. <laughs> I really like that. Like, this movie is awesome. I know I forgot a lot, and the notes, it kind of just flows together, and it's just like, oh, it's just like every other movie. But, like, it was really good. Like, I, I don't have really anything else. Yeah. So, except that, of course, he wins and he walks away. So, <laughs> <laughs> I like the, the final scene where he does kill. Juice, juice, uh, Lone Wolf and Cub, I'm going to say. I can't say that <laughs> name, but he has blood blood just coming down his head and he kills him. Oh, yeah. Ichi always just kills his villains at the end. There's never like a peace treaty to be like, okay, you go that way, I'll go this way. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, don't piss me off. So is there anything else but, you want to talk about for six? Uh, that's pretty much all I got on six. How about you? That's it for me. I mean, there's really not much. I mean, it's a great Satoichi film. Pretty formulaic, the more I think about it, outside of the lone wolf aspect. But yeah. it's good. <laughs> it's a solid film. I agree. So let me go into some behind the scenes for seven, mostly notable cast. There is a mm -hmm. lot. You'll be shocked. So, 
The first person is Mayumi Nagisa, who plays Oshisu, who is one of the uh, love interests, I believe. And she has been in a lot of movies. She's been in Battle of El Ano, an episode of the show Three Outlaw Samurai, which uh, the movie was released by Criterion. It's okay. I haven't seen it in like four years, so I gotta rewatch it. Another person is Tatsuo Endo. He's back again. He's he's in a bunch of these movies. He was uh, the innkeeper. He was in... Uh... He returns as boss Yasuguro. Goro? Of Takeya, which is like from the third movie, I believe. And if forgotten, he was in Audition. Lone Wolf and Cub, Owls of the Honor, Daimajin. Same guy, so he's really cool. Uh, the next person is Yuta Yutaka Nakamela, who plays Mikichi. And what's interesting is that this was the guy who kept showing up through these movies. And finally, I was like, who is this guy? I keep seeing him in every single Zatoichi movie. Shockingly, he's not in many movies outside of Zatoichi. He was in Lone Wolf, though. Lone Wolf and Cub. But, so, it just made me think, like... He may have been a neighbor, or like a personal friend of Shintaru Katsu to like get all these movies in Lone Wolf and Cub and like that's it in his acting career. I don't know if you've noticed him, but he kind of has a lot of I'm pretty of sure I have. He's always that's like, why I like hearing your take because you know these characters. That's what I, yeah. I like to hear your, your take on the bat, bat behind the scenes and cast because I, I really can't get that down, but I, that's why I listen to your, your take. Yeah, and the final person. Now, this guy is awesome. I really love this actor. It's uh, Bokuzen Hidari. He is a character actor. He is always the downtrodden peasant or someone who just has a miserable face throughout the entire film. In this movie, he is, like, making gunpowder or something. Like, something. But he's in a lot of Kurosawa films, like Seven Samurai, Yoshimbo, a um, couple of others. But what's really cool that I didn't know until I looked it up is that he was born in the 1890s, which was 40 years or so from when the Zatoichi series takes place, which is like the 1850s. So he's like closer to Zatoichi times than when he filmed the movie, which was 70 years after he was born. Like, that was such a cool fact that I found. That's interesting. Um, that's a good timeline. And like you said, the villains, they, they have the face to match it. That's what I like. Like you said, on one of the actors there, is he has a, a real, they have that menacing look that fits him. You could tell. You don't even <laughs> need to know they're a bad guy. It just stands out. Yeah, like all of the, uh, villains are really noteworthy. And that was one thing I noticed about the last movie that I should have said, is that he looks totally different than when he was in movie two. Or th yeah, two. Than he does in six. Like, he's bald mm -hmm. in six, has, like, no facial hair, like, no nothing. So. Yeah, so. One thing That's I want to say in general about this movie before we get into like story by story stuff is that this movie has a lot of terrifying imagery <laughs> there's lots of shots of Zatuichi in the dark the special contacts on was like it's just his face illuminated and he looks like menacing and scary like, I don't know why that was chosen for this movie because it's not in anything else yeah and he, he even says that's a uh, you're in my, my world now a Blind man's world. When he turns <laughs> off, it goes completely dark, which makes him even more, you know, I don't really want to fuck with this guy, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> this intro was a lot of fun. And I, I remember you uh, texted me about it. You were like, oh my gosh, I love this intro. Where, um, wait, yeah, where he uh, is going to get lollipops, and one kid is like, hey, I want a lollipop too. And there's like one other kid who's like, yeah, I want one too. He's like, okay, get those two kids uh, the lollipop. He's like, okay. And like takes <laughs> his money and like it zooms out. Like the camera zooms out and there's like 15 kids <laughs> like in line. 
And Zatsurichi <laughs> is like, wait, how many kids are there? Yeah. And he's just like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> he's got that gambling money. <laughs> it is so funny. Yeah, he falls in that hole. He yeah. doesn't trust the kid. <laughs> The kid is like, hey, by the way, there's a hole on the left. Don't go there. He's like, ah, fuck you, kid. I know what you're doing. I'm going to walk on the left anyways. And he walks and he falls and like nearly breaks his leg. And he's like, dang it. <laughs> Kids like, we told you so. But before that happens, uh, we get a really cool uh, inversion of the trope. That is the intro before the actual mm-hmm. intro that like is part of the story. Where he mm-hmm. uh, is in this room with a bunch of mean looking guys. And he's like, it looks like an N, like someone asleep. And they're all like facing each other. Zatuichi's asleep. And he's like, something evil's here. Or he's like slapping at his face because there's like flies. <laughs> and like, it, he does like his look of like, I'm about to kill some motherfuckers. But he just kills flies and chops them in half. <laughs> I was saying I need him in my house. Get flies. Oh I'm my call Ichi. Same. <laughs> Fly spot at Ichi. Freaking dices him up, and then it shows the flies even fall on the floor. Just blank, blank. <laughs> I just imagine an intern right off camera throwing the flies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's all I can think of when that happens. Yeah, that's that's a that's his uh iconic scene like you said he does he shows his talents just like the candles the coins he slices through now it's flies yeah because like it's a great setup because it shows like all these mean people glaring at him and like ah fuck that guy like you know this that so you think he's gonna attack them and he like stands up he's like who am i gonna have to kill and they look at him like huh and he whips his sword out it's like you know doing all that and then points to the ground and you see flies falling. He's like, ah, that's better. And then goes back to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great it's inversion like, of that trope. It's like Ichi the human fly swatter. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, I love this movie also. <laughs> I loved the whole story arc of uh, the musketeer guy who tries uh-huh. to kill him in the beginning and he slowly... Uh, kind of works and tries to uh, repent, I guess, for trying to kill Ichi. Uh, does he shoot him? He does. He shoots him, like, yeah. right near the spine. And see, Ichi falls into the water, but someone finds him, uh-huh. like, a minute later and rescues <laughs> him. And it ends up being that shooter's sister, which is hilarious. Uh-huh. Cause I, I couldn't really remember if he got shot or not, because I know they carry him and you know, they're carrying him out of the river. And then and then the guys fall in the river. It's funny, they're carrying him. And all the guys fall in the river, but Ichi's still on the, like, the bridge <laughs> laughing. <laughs> or, the, or the dock, whatever. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just, they're trying to carry him, be nice. And everyone's just like stepping off the pier, falling into this probably cold river because it's winter. And it's like, oh. <laughs> yeah. And Ichi's laughing. He's other hurt, but still laughing. Again, Hyuma balances out the depressing that is Ichi's yeah. a, uh, attempted assassination. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's... Then you got, like, these four guys. They're, like, in a dojo just bullying people. Oh, and yeah, I love that scene. Ichi, and he's, like... They, like, drag him in there, like, force him in there and He's like making fun of them and stuff. And then he, uh, they're like, well, let's see what you got. They pull out like these wooden swords to like pretty much spar, like a sparring match, what they do. That's what I would call it. I don't know. But yeah, you're right. I mean, Ichi just dominates all of them, man. It's, 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 it's an awesome <laughs> scene. Yeah, it's funny because he mocks them for wanting to beat up a blind man. He's like, why would you do that? I'm so weak. He's like, ah, enough excuses. Fight. And he does, and he yeah. wins in, like, seconds. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's like, this is no ordinary blind man. I mean, I think I've said that throughout every film, but it's true. There's a 
right after that, we meet uh, Kuni, who's the daughter of Bunkichi. Who Bunkichi is one of the town bosses. And he's doing, like, a fireworks display. And uh, that's when we get introduced to the uh, conflict about the river. Because we get a hilarious scene where Ichi is being carried across the river <laughs> yeah. by, like, somebody much smaller than him. And he's, like, struggling to get Ichi across the river. <laughs> that's another humor part. Like, I just found that odd. Like, you know, that's what these films bring is that oddness because they're carrying him on the shoulders. He's like, you put on a little weight, he tells him, or, so, or you're a heavy guy. <laughs> He's like struggling. He's he's barely making it. His back going out and everything. Yeah, because um, it seems like they're losing money. The boss gangs and all that, because they're like, "Hey, we're yeah. just gonna pay or make them pay four times what they usually pay to get across the river." And everyone's <laughs> like, "What? <laughs> it's like you can't do that. We'll make no profits because nobody will come across the river and pay that." <laughs> Yeah, that's it's what they're, those are 80 governments up to, or the government of that time, or whatever, they, what do they call them, magistrate, something like that? Yeah, magistrate. Yeah, magistrate, but, yeah, it's it's real odd. I just find that funny, because, like, Ichi has that guy carry him, and then, like, he, he doesn't forget him. Like, you'll see another scene where he's going across the river, and he's like, not you, not you, not you, but he'll <laughs> pick that guy, and that guy's like, He's, like, trying to hide from Ichi, and Ichi is just like, no, I want you, and just points at him. <laughs> like, wow, he's blind. It's so funny. He's all hiding from him. Yeah, that's that's hilarious. And then we go back to the, the hot bath scene. I guess all the men are peeping on the girl again. Oh, yes. <laughs> I love that scene, because Ichi walks up, he's like, wait, what's happening? And, like, nobody looks at him. And they're like, shh, shh, be quiet. Like, be quiet. We're peeping. He's like, oh, okay. And he's like, doing that. <laughs> and he like, purposely like, knocks something over. And she's like, who's there? And he's like, I can't believe that you are peeping on this woman. <laughs> he gets water thrown in his face. <laughs> and then we go back to Ukuni. I mean, she cares for Ichi. And you could tell they have feelings towards each other. You know, he, he gets the women, Ichi. Yeah, he's a lot more uh, open to that <laughs> compared to early yeah. movies. Just makes me think of the scene in the first movie where he's like stumbling across the like dark forest to avoid a woman, and in this movie he's like, ah, whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you come along, you come along, you know. See where the dice fall. Hey. That's a good, good pun. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, it is. <laughs> but, um, He's a gambling man. Yeah. There's a, so we find out, like, soon that the, uh, the rifleman was actually the sister or whatever, and it's revealed that he racked up a lot of debt and refused to pay it and talks to Ichi about it, and Ichi is like, I don't know, like, you know, whatever, and a bunch of people kidnap um, Sairoku is what his name is. Mm -hmm. And says that he was trying to kill uh, one of the bosses. And they say that Bunkichi is, uh, must give over the rights to the river, fight, or they, and if they, he doesn't do either of those, they will kill Sairoku. And they're like, what? We don't want to do any of that. Don't kill him. And we get one of my favorite Ichi scenes. Yeah, it's... That's just the plot of a... <clears throat> yeah, that, that Yasuku... What's his name? Yasugu? Yasugu? I, I'm slaughtering it, but... Yasugolo? <laughs> he, he, he has intentions to... There you go, to overrun Bunkichi? No, not Bunkichi. <laughs> I'm getting in. I'm getting ahead here. But what's the, what's the other guy? Man, uh, so I, jumped, I flipped there a little Sairoku? bit. Sairoku? The who's, who's the other boss guy? Boo. Oh. Bushki. Bunkichi. Bushkiki. Bunkichi. Bunkichi, okay. Yeah. Man, this is horrible. Me trying to pronounce this, man. 
<laughs> it's leading to all that, you know. <laughs> but we get an awesome scene where we uh, Ichi is just like bathing in the river while there's like hot conflict is going on <laughs> over the rights to the river. <laughs> And he's just, like, naked, like, bathing himself in the background. And eventually oh, someone's yeah. like, what's he doing there? Let's beat him up. And they show up, and he's, like, in the water because he's naked. Like, he's not going to come out. It's 1964 when this movie was made. He's not doing that. We're not getting yeah. f- full frontal. We're not getting Jess Franco here. <laughs> Jess Franco. <laughs> <laughs> like, we're not getting like that. Like you said, it's a like- family film. Yeah, it's a family film. And it's it was funny because he's like, come come into the water and fight me. And they're like, okay, like you're blind, you're easy. And then he just sinks into the water and like kills them all without making a single ripple in the water. They're like, where did he go? I lo- and one by one. I fall. love that scene. That's one of my favorite scenes in the whole film. Same here. I love that. And it's like, water, you go in slow motion. But you could still tell he's dicing them up underwater. Hey, that's another, another little dicing. <laughs> yeah, man, we're on top of. I didn't even right? think of that, but yeah, you know, Ichi plays the dice. But yeah, it's it's you just see all these guys. You're just looking, and you could just see their faces as they fall into the water. They're like, they're all, uh, uh, you know, how they, <laughs> the, the death sound. And, <laughs> Uh, and, you know, they're all falling in, and you just see Ichi underwater getting his swords and aerobics in. <laughs> He's doing his one-hour <laughs> workout for the day. Yeah. Yeah, but, like, but, one yeah, thing I, I need to know is that the fireworks guy, who uh, I guess the daughter knows, or is the daughter of the fireworks guy, that fireworks guy is who I was talking about, who is the, like, melancholy, yeah. like, just suffering face you should watch seven samurai it's a three and a half hour movie though it's a little long mm-hmm. it's one of the best movies ever made in my opinion but uh-huh. the entire movie he is just like melancholy i'll try to find a picture for you once we're done but he is like that's, awesome he's a character actor that's all the characters he plays is a peasant who is down on his luck and he makes that face the entire movie and he kind of does in this movie but not really. <laughs> yeah, I could I could just picture him in a gangster movie with a cigar in his mouth just with that face. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he died pretty soon after, actually, in this movie. It was like 72, oh, wow. I think. So a couple years later. Again, he wow. was born in 1890 <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Many years before this film. He was closer to the time period of Zatuichi than he was to the filming of the movie like that just blows my mind yeah that's why i like listening to your behind the scenes i don't i don't get that knowledge you know yeah i don't think that i know this like in the back of my head i have it written down i looked it up (laughs) so (laughs) it's not as like like cool but it does put a lot in focus like a lot of people who i see in this movie i'm like do i know them and i look at the imdb and i'm like oh Seven Samurai, Rashomon, uh, <laughs> Quite On, like all these movies like that I love, and I'm like, oh yeah, okay. It's what I love about um, the film. I'm, I'm glad you looked him up because I would be totally lost there. <laughs> See, I need to watch the Battles Without Honor movies, movies because all of these people are in them. Like I keep mentioning oh. that every time I'm like, oh yeah, this is a notable cast member. They're in all the Battles Without Honor movies. <laughs> yeah, you. You've seen the films more than me. I'm still like, uh, I'm still learning these, getting into them, slowly dipping, dipping into them. Yeah. But uh, there's a really sad scene towards the end when they're all really excited for the festival and for the fireworks. And uh, Mm -hmm. Ichi is given a new kimono that like this woman, uh, I guess the sister, she like handmade for him. And, like, the gangsters are like, you better not be here tonight. And he's, like, hold, like in the kimono. And he's like, but I want to go. He's like, no, you better know what's good for you. Well, you better leave town. Or whatever. Mm-hmm. And, like, he's he's walking away in the fireworks star. And he's like, oh, I guess it begun. And it's, like, really sad. 
Yeah. Yeah, talking about that scene, like a little before that, he's like walking into the, like into the sun. It's such a beautiful scene. He's walking, you just have the sun looking down. I mean, the sun up and him looking down. And he's just walking away. It's just, I'm a fanboy for these scenes. <laughs> I guess I could say. Yeah. And what's, what's incredible about that is that I remember I was watching the movie and that sunset became like a thing and he's walking away and I was like, oh my God, are we done with the movie? Because <laughs> mm-hmm. every movie ends that way, him walking to the setting sun. <laughs> and I was like, oh, like this was way shorter than I thought it was. And I like pressed the little one time like button where it tells you how much yeah. left. And said I had like 20 minutes left and I was like, oh, it's not over. <laughs> it's I was not like, done. what? What a great, like, subversion of expectations. Like, if you watch yeah, it straight through, like, one, two, three, four, you know. Like, I don't know if you had that thought, but I was like, oh, we're done. Oh, that was fast. That was great. Melancholy ending, but no. Yeah, I checked the, like you said, the time. I was like, no, nah, it's not over, but could be an ending. <laughs> yeah, it usually is. It's the funny thing. That's why I thought. That's why I checked. I was like, "Oh, <clears throat> okay, we're done." <laughs> yeah, it kind of kind of reminds me of a spaghetti western in a way. It's just like it has this wild west feel. Uh, right before he leaves <clears throat> um, town or whatever, he looks at Sairoku and is like, oh, "Oh yeah, by the way, don't shoot people with guns," and walks away. <laughs> and he's sitting there like, "How the fuck did he know that?" <laughs> yeah. That's a, like his senses are one of a kind, man. And then we get the fake ending, which we've talked about. And uh, Yasugoro attacks Bunkichi's house and kills like everybody. Uh-huh. And I was shocked. I forgot that from the last time I watched it. They, they think that Ichi's out of the picture, so they're trying to kind of bully And that's when um, he comes back and kills all of them after killing that gang. So two gangs like get knocked out immediately, like at the end. Yeah, and I have a quote on that. Like, it's in like a hall, like a hall area, and he says a quote. He's like, "In the dark, the advantage is mine. It turns you all into blind men like me." Ooh. I just thought oh, that was I a powerful that. line. I didn't know that. That's good that you wrote it. Yeah, that, that stuck out to me in the film, actually. Well, I was like, that's that's exactly what he does. He hits the lights, and it's, you know, it's death time. <laughs> <laughs> death time, exactly. Because <laughs> that was the part I was talking about earlier before we went into, like, the intro, is that this movie has a lot of, like, scenery and imagery that's, like, terrifying. Because the lights go out, and you just see his face, and he's like, ah, like, like Frankenstein, like... He's ready mm-hmm. to fuck people up. Yeah. But Surprised he, he doesn't have rocks thrown at him for being blind, how mean they are to him in these films. Oh, just you wait. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Don't speak too soon. <laughs> to, to be announced. <laughs> yeah, to be announced. <laughs> wait and find <laughs> out. But uh, I love the ending to this because he, uh, he kills Yasugoro and is like, yeah, fuck you. And he's standing there, and you see the fireworks going off. And he's just, like, standing there, like, menacingly, and it ends. It just ends. It's like the second movie yeah. where he just opens a guy up from shoulder to, like, hip. And just ends. It's, like, so ballsy. Stand. He doesn't walk off into the sunset. Although he does, but he comes back. Like, I love <laughs> that. I just think they got to change it up, is what I'm thinking, but... Yeah, it's like you said, it's ballsy to do that approach. Some might like it, some might not. Me personally, I loved it. Yeah, same here. I loved it. <laughs> I was reading up on Lone Wolf and Cub, and I was shocked. Uh-huh. Shocked at what I found. What, what, what information did you get there? Did you know that it was produced by Shintaro Katsu? No way. No way. Yeah. I did not know that. <laughs> I just found that out, like, as I was reading, because I was wondering, I was like, where did this idea come from? 
And the artist who made the original manga in, like, the 60s, he was like, oh, like, I just wanted a story and, like, the character, or the story comes from the characters. Just go where your hand takes you when you're drawing. And I was like, okay, that's not an answer <laughs> that I wanted. I was like, I'm going to keep looking. And then <laughs> I noticed in the film section, it was like, oh, like, the first three movies were released in 1972. So while they were making Zatoichi, the later movies, and produced by Shintaro Katsu, and I was like, oh. I was like, I was wondering, because wow. I, I kept saying that it was like, like, the same team, but I was right. Holy shit. Yeah. Well, well I guess that baby was inspired. Cause I, <laughs> well, we'll be getting to that. But... Yeah, because I was curious, <laughs> but... now that we're back, I'm going to edit out everything before the baby part or the uh me finding okay. the lone wolf stuff but like zatoichi 8 uh, fight zatoichi fight 1964 also all these movies were in 1964 um this movie i had a theory that it was the inspiration for the movies lone wolf and cup apparently i am right <laughs> i did not yeah. expect that i didn't think i'd ever find an answer to that after doing some research, you are correct. But before we go into um, the story of that, notable cast, because I like this. It's um, mm -hmm. the character Boss Yunosuke. Unosuke is the, uh, whatever it's called, if you spell out everyone, but it's Yunosuke. Played by mm -hmm. Nobuo Kaneko. He has also appeared in a lot of movies. Uh, Ikiru, Kurosawa movie. All of the Battles Without Humanity films, which I was shocked about. Usually it's like one or two, wow. like per actor. But he's in all of them. Cops vs. Thugs, which we've talked about. Neither of us have seen it, but we know of it. <laughs> if I remember <laughs> And then, the movie I keep hearing about, which I will one day watch, which apparently is, like, really awful in terms of, like, filmmaking, but it's, like, hilarious. Terrifying Girls High School. <laughs> hmm. That's the name. It is totally I, not I've never heard of that one. correct. But... I had my own theory. I Ooh. said, oh, I, this is a casual, but I said, could it be called Zatoichi the Babysitter? Probably, yeah. <laughs> was just, the, the title it was just messy just around or something it. like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it doesn't. Fight, Satoichi, fight. I was ready for like a tournament. <laughs> like, movie. You're like, and it's just him like, taking care change of the diapers. <laughs> Change diapers. Change diapers, Satoichi. Change diapers. No. <laughs> no, it's... It's a very touching film. It is. But I love the intro because it's the credits and you see, you know, director name, starred... Uh, producer, editor, you know, all that. And it's him just walking mm -hmm. on a pathway, and he sees a big rock, and he kicks it aside. He starts walking again. He's about to kick a giant pile of shit. And he realizes it, and he just <laughs> walks around it and keeps walking. <laughs> it's like, that's the intro. <laughs> it made me laugh so hard there's when the, I saw that. There's the senses kicking in. Yeah, it has a. I like this one because it goes through to his disability. Because you have like a bunch of blind men at the beginning. Oh, the pilgrimage! Just, uh, yeah, I love that. Yeah, and they're all blind, and they're just bonding and singing and joking around. And you're like, Ichi finally found like people you know you can connect with. My name is Ichi. My name is also Ichi. <laughs> <laughs> I love that scene, just, and all the hilarious. guys are like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> it's like, "There's no way." And it's like, oh, we've ne we haven't had fun like this in years. And I was like, ah, you go, Zatuichi. Yeah. You're just having a blast, man. I want to say, though, it the mood changes immediately. Because um, there's like a queen or like, you know, someone high up, a lord woman, who's like riding or who's walking with a baby and Satoichi, like, uh, decides to ride on a palanquin. And is, like, riding along the road. 
sees her and he's like, oh, you should take my palanquin. And she's like, no, I know. And he's like, I insist. And like pays for it. And he's like, okay, bye. And throughout this entire scene, we get like bandits who want to kill him. And they finally get to the palanquin that he was in. And they just stab all the swords in it. But we know that he's not in that anymore. And we're like, oh my god, is the baby dead? Like, did it really go that length? But no, thankfully not. But the mom was killed, <laughs> like, gruesomely. Yeah. Zatoichi just feels so bad. I felt really bad for him. <laughs> it's like... Yeah, it's... He's kind of saying it should have been me, but, you know... And, they, and, like, the bandits don't even, like, take responsibility for it either. They're just like, oh, no. it's not him. Dump the body. But then Zatoichi <laughs> shows on. up. I was going to ask you, are they brothers in real life? Or yeah. just on film? Then then real life. Younger brother, older brother. Oh, wow. That's why I was like, it's so funny. He, I even had my... That's why I was like, number two, the second movie, when... The older brother is playing the older brother. Like, it was really funny to me. Like, how it was actually... Zatoichi is the younger brother in real life and in number two of Lone Wolf. Wow. <laughs> it's like... And that was my question I was going to ask you. I just, now that you brought it up. A totally to... different Zatoichi film <laughs> from here on out. Yeah. <laughs> I just thought, like y'all, you said ballsy. I think it's real ballsy to... You know, add the baby and see what Ichi can do with the baby. I thought that was ballsy, too. Like, for me, it made him even more vulnerable than he usually is. Because mm -hmm. now he has to take care of, like, a human baby. While he's blind and he has bandits coming after him. Who are, like, pissed off. And he's trying to get to the baby's father. Who ends up being a total asshole and, like, awful. Mm -hmm. Like he puts so much work for the baby. It is funny though. He tears down one of the army flags. And it's like, ha ha! We have so many diapers now. And the generals are like, right there, like, what the fuck? You're using our flag <laughs> for diapers? <laughs> Major disrespect right there. It was really funny. They're scumbags anyways, but yeah, it's. There's a scene where the baby pees in his face, where I was laughing out that loud. That happens multiple times. <laughs> he <laughs> pees on everybody. And then, you know, E.T. just went, oh, oh, you know, he goes, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I guess it's a boy. <laughs> <laughs> that made and me laugh. Bringing up that, that flag scene, he, he killed a bunch of those guys just while changing the diaper. This is a really cool detail. When he uh, he goes to the temple to uh, kind of give the baby off or something. And it's like, oh, where's the father? I, I know this name. I know the name of the city or the village. Never been there. Mm -hmm. Where do I go? How far away it is? And they're like, oh, yeah, that's a 60 mile plus trip. And he's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, how long am I going to be with this baby? And, and one of the guys. As there slaps him. It's longer than that. He's not telling him the truth. It's like 70. <laughs> and Zatuichi yeah. is just like, oh my god. How am I going to keep a baby alive this long? Especially considering I'm a dude. I don't have breast milk. Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> There's another humorous part in that later. With that. Where Ichi's all actually trying to breastfeed him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to confuse the baby. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was laughing. You just see Ichi's expression on his face, and I'm like, you can tell you're not comfortable with that, man. Oh, there's a hilarious scene when um, he's gambling, and he's, like, holding the baby, <laughs> and he's like, oh, I'm going to get you some soft diapers. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have this in my notes also, so I'm laughing. And it's so funny because um, the boss is like, hey, I'll do some one-on-one -on -one game or, yeah, gaming with you, dicing. And he's like, oh, okay, cool. And all the uh, bosses, like henchmen, are like, ha, 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 like, we're going to scam him so hard. 
And Ichi's like, can I hold the dice real quick? <laughs> yeah. Because I'm blind. I want to make sure, you know, it's not weighted, you know, whatever. He's like, oh, okay, yeah, sure. He does it. And he takes the dice back. And as he's shaking it, he throws it up in the air, lands in a dice cup, like, in the rafters. He puts some uh, dice from his sleeve into it, does it, and rolls it. And rolls a double, like, snake eyes or something. And Zachary yeah, Ichi yeah. is like, that's not right. And he slashes the cup slashes the yeah. uh, thing above him and then the dice fall down and hit odd that's <laughs> like what he bet on i was like what a bad what he bet on. like that's that's one of the most badass scenes of the film right there man. I, oh at one point no before he does that he throws the baby at the woman and then does that yeah yeah and they're like shocked they're like oh my god you just threw a baby across the room <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he's. And then um, after that, he asks for his chips. <laughs> he's, he's like, like where, where do I, I cash, I cash this in? <laughs> after he just like took all those guys out, he's like, where do I cash my chips at? <laughs> and then they look at him like, you just did a murdering spree here and you want your chips? That was. This movie is just so fun. Yeah, it is. If I had to show like somebody said, one movie, this would probably be it. Aside from the original, but that's just because that was the best one. You don't need three men and a baby. You got Satoshi and a baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so the next scene is hilarious because he hires a woman, a prostitute, to look after the baby while he sleeps. And that was one thing I never thought of because, like, I know <laughs> about the whole, like, how hard it is to raise a baby. But, like... If you pair that up with Zatoichi, who is, like, blind and on his own, not a woman, so he can't breastfeed, like, he must have been so exhausted by the end of the day. <laughs> yeah. And he still doesn't go to sleep. He keeps getting up. Yeah. Like, <laughs> his protective senses are so strong. So, again, we love uh -huh. Zatoichi. <laughs> yeah, we do. And then he, like, I don't know if he touches her or tickles her. He gets up in the middle and he'll like tickle. She's like, what the hell are you doing to me? I'm blind. Tells her. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't she disgraced? Like she was like a prostitute or something. And like as the movie goes yeah. on and as she takes care of the baby more. Yeah, she is. She um, like she becomes more motherly and wants to be with the baby and help it grow. Like I love that character. Yeah, too. She's, she's a thief. She stole from some guy his wallet. That was like nothing. Like Zatuichi just mm -hmm. grabs it and gives it back. Like that was so easy yeah. to resolve. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> but it's he's like, like, kill me, the baby, and her if you want. He's like, what? <laughs> it's like, I'm not going to kill us that. all. Kill us all. <laughs> and then she, she plots to, you know, he saved her life pretty much. So she says, I'll do anything. I'm at yours, you know. And he's like, I'll be your nanny, pretty much. <laughs> there was a funny scene with her afterwards where uh, they're in an inn or whatever, and, and Ichi is talking to the blind men's pilgrimage, which we saw in the beginning. Yeah. And uh, Oko, who is the woman, she is uh, looking after the baby, and is like, oh, the baby's crying, needs to pee. And he's like, oh, just take him outside, pee on the ground, whatever. And she takes him to, like, the main sitting room of this inn, like, on the second story, and lets the baby pee. And someone's like, oh, wow, rain. And is, like, holding oh, yeah. his tongue out. And the guy looks up, and he just sees a baby peeing on him. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, that's no ordinary he's like, oh. waterfall or rain. <laughs> <laughs> that's another humor part, man, that had me cracking up. Is it this movie or the next one where they're trying to get to her and he keeps getting in the way and like knocking them down the stairs? <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm looking through the notes, but. I know these guys rough him up and then those guys that have a price for him try to take advantage of it. They throw his cane away and they have him pretty much without his, his sword. At that, at that end. 
Yeah. And they're uh, I'm trying to remember. They're trying. But I don't know if I he um, he outmaneuvers them, gets his cane, and pretty much the sumo wrestlers run away, and those those other guys get the sword. <laughs> I'm calling them sumo wrestlers. I don't even know if they are, but that's I what think they, they reminded are, me of. Yeah. Because I remember I made a note, like, in my head. I was like, it's interesting that we, like, current day America, view sumo wrestlers as, like, really big and fat, but also really muscular. Mm -hmm. I think someone, yeah. like, did a study, and, like, they were as strong as, like, football players. Yeah. But, like, back in that day, it was about agility and, like, actual wrestling. Mm -hmm. Not, you know, muscle. Yeah, because these, <laughs> these guys aren't that big. They're, like they're big, but they're not. But they're not. You know, like you'd see a sumo wrestler nowadays. They're not that. They're nothing like that. But uh, eventually, they uh, Oko and Ichi find the uh, baby's father, and we're mm -hmm. like, "Yes, they're gonna get a reunion. This is gonna be so <laughs> touching." Oh, son, I missed you. I don't. I didn't know where you were. Oh no, your mother's dead. No, we don't get any of that. We get, oh, yeah, I think she was a whore. Yeah, nah, fuck <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it. Like, yeah, pretty much. It's like, I don't want that baby. Get that baby He's out of my sight. Of shit. And Zatarichi is shit. saying they're like, just spent 70 miles walking blind. Okay, he couldn't take a horse, couldn't take a carriage. He had to walk <laughs> all the way. Like, 70 miles is a lot. That's like at least a week. Fuck yeah, it is, man. With his blindness. And having to stop at every end, make sure the baby is breastfed, uh, taken care of, diapers, bandits are coming after them. Like, after all this work, he's like, nah, fuck that kid. Walks away. And you're just like, what? <laughs> and Ichi knows he's full of shit. He knows it. Because at first he was being like, yeah, I know her. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's my wife. And then the moment he finds out that that's his kid... He just flips. Yeah. Like. It's like, it's not mine. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> like I don't even know that. How, how you said it. I don't even know that whore. Yeah. And, mm. and Z Ichi is just sitting there like, what do I do with this baby? <laughs> like, this yeah. is a real life human baby. Like, what the fuck? And he cares for the baby, you could tell. He spent all this time making sure it stays alive and, like, all this stuff. Got pissed on, killed, like, yeah. dozens of people, like, to protect the baby, like. While he's changing diapers. Yeah, and then the father sends killers after Ichi to kill him and the baby to clear his name. And I was like, what yeah. the fuck? He, he, he teams up with that hitman, the last one left. That's trying to get him. Like, it was just shock. Like, this movie was awesome. Like, I loved it. Uh, but, like, my God, it is, it is emotional. Like, yeah. You even got a monk there that, you know, he tells Ichi, let me raise him. You can't raise him. Not your lifestyle. That also happens to be when uh, Yunosuke, the father, tries to kill Ichi while they are just talking about what to do with yeah. the baby. And it's like, come on. <laughs> Man. It, it reminds me of that character in the original, that one that just gets the girls pregnant and has her jump oh, yeah, to her death Tate. or kills her. Yeah. He reminds me of him a lot for some reason. He's Wes. Tate didn't... Well, I guess he did kill that woman who was pregnant. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, he's as awful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was trying to think. Like, he, oh no, he didn't kill them. <laughs> He didn't kill a baby. And I'm like, oh, wait. I guess he did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I like the, the torches that are brought in the final scene in this film. Oh, yeah. The, like, running around him while he's like, yeah. trying to figure it out. He's banning, like... They're trying to distract him from sound because they know that's his strength is from hearing. So they plan to bring torches in there and pretty much set Ichi on fire. Yeah. But it's Ichi pretty awesome. <laughs> still killing him with flames on on, on him and everything. Yeah, because he starts uh, hacking off all the lanterns, right? 
or the torch. Yeah, yeah. Start slicing them up. You just see them falling. It's a, it's an epic scene, man. But I love the ending to this because he leaves the baby at the temple, and he walks right past Oko, who is the woman who was stole the wallet or whatever, without uh-huh. saying anything to her. And then he passes the blind man's pilgrimage, but continues on his way. Doesn't even say yeah. hi to them, nothing. Like, he is conflicted. <laughs> yeah. He knows that's his lifestyle. He can't, he can't get attached to anyone. Because no one's safe during his lifestyle, including himself. Yeah, like, but. you just really feel for this guy. <laughs> you do? Yeah. It's, you're like, man... Can't this guy get a family life? Children, nope. Someone will always try to kill him. <laughs> are we ready for movie nine? The final one? I'd say we are. I'm out of notes. So. <laughs> <laughs> that was my last one about the pilgrimage and all that. But uh, movie nine called Adventures of Zatuichi. I was ready. I was like, he's going to do some awesome, which he did. But mm-hmm. it's not as much of an adventure as in one location for the entire film. Yeah. But notable cast. Let's get that out of the way. All um, right. Miwa Takada plays Saki, which I don't know if that was on purpose <laughs> to be like the alcohol. But she was mm-hmm. in movie four, if you remember. She uh, brought Zatuichi to the end, to her parents' end at the climax. It's that woman. I didn't catch that. Interesting. Uh, she was also in the Daima Jin films and voiced Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Oh, I heard you talking about that. Yeah, Yeah, it's her. <laughs> well, That's I was like, odd. you may not know this because I didn't. <laughs> Here's who she is. Yeah. Wow. But the next guy is insane. Mikijiro Hira, who plays uh, Gunosuke. Mm, Gunosuke. Yeah. He is one of the most accomplished Japanese actors of all time, outside of Toshiro wow. Mifune. I did not know this at all. So apparently he was really good at Shakespearean acting, and that he knew mm. all of Shakespeare's plays and was able to act in any of them. And he was uh, also in... Three Outlaw Samurai, which I've talked about. It's an okay film. I haven't seen it in like five years. But yeah. uh, fun fact is that he received the Medal of Honor from the Japanese government and inducted into the Order of the Rising Sun, which, if you don't know, it's a award dedicated to those who have, quote, made distinguished achievements in international relations, promotion of Japanese culture, advancements in the field, development and warfare, or preservation of the environment. He's a pretty fucking big deal. <laughs> yeah, I would say so, yeah. Man. And also he was in Takashi Miike's 13 Assassins, which is one of my favorite samurai films. I gotta That's see that. That's not from the 50s. It's awesome, it's so bloody. But the final cast member I want to talk about is Akitake Kono, who plays Garota Kajima. So he's in a lot of early Kurosawa films. I kind of recognized him. He's in the Senshiro Sugata parts one and two. The Men Who Tread on the Tiger's Tail, which is one of my favorite early Kurosawa films. Uh, No Regrets for Our Youth. Haven't seen that. And a couple of big name Japanese films, such as Sancho the Bailiff and The Human Condition, which I don't know if you know what that movie is, but it's a seven Mm. hour epic. (laughs) Oh, man. About a guy's life from childhood all the way to when he dies. He goes to a wow. Japanese war camp and a World War II and like all this stuff. It's a really major film. It just got released on Blu-ray by Criterion. I want to get it in October when they do the flash. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, so like this movie, like I loved it. This was probably my favorite of the four of this section. Mm-hmm. And I think it's because it has all these really big name guys. But yeah, let's get into the movie. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm I'm blown away by the insight right there. So. <laughs> the intro is pretty awesome, where with the yes, dust storm, 
I love it. Uh, a kite falls, hits Itchy in the face, and he's like, what just hit me in the face? <laughs> like, I did not hear it coming. Like, nothing. And the kid he does is like, his laugh. Yeah, he's like, oh, ah, it's a kite. <laughs> it's a menacing laugh, man. And the kids are like, hey, can I get it back? And he's like, okay, sure. And the kid is like, ah, he's smelly. And they all went off. And there's a really <laughs> great line, which I wrote down, where he uh, looks towards the sun. And this is actually a really super famous line. Like, people know this line who haven't even seen the movie. It's, uh, kids are the only ones who can show the faces to the sun without shame. Mm. Yeah, I remember that. That's a powerful line right there. It is. Like, if you read the uh, essays at the end of the uh, whatever, and the booklet, and the uh, Criterion Edition, mm -hmm. that's like one of the main lines the guy references a lot. Is that like, yeah, he's a, you know, he kills a lot of people, but he has a soft spot for kids, and they note this. Crime, yeah. So. There's some awesome kids in this film, too. Oh, yeah. I, I really love the two boys. Like, they are hilarious. Mm -hmm. They're really competent. They're not annoying kids. I hate no. when kids show up in movies because for, the like, 99% of it, they suck. <laughs> yeah. But in this yeah, movie, they're you. competent. They do what they need to. They progress the story. They don't, like, uh, they don't stop the story. Like, they're good. <laughs> yeah, they just run with it pretty much. Great actors, too. Like, I was shocked. Yeah. I don't know who those kids are. Maybe the today, they, like, really big-hitting, you know, actors, but... They, they really stood out to me in this film. One thing I want to say is that um, he gets a letter. Uh, someone asked him to send a letter to a woman named Sen at Musashi Temple, or N. Now, mm -hmm. I don't know if this is deliberate or not, but there's a very legendary swordsman from, like, the 1400s or the 1500s. And yeah. uh, his, name, his name is Musashi Miyamoto. He was, like, the best samurai ever, like, in history. And he mm -hmm. wrote, like, a biography about, like, the art of, like, being awesome. It's not what it's called, but basically. Yeah. And, like... I wonder if that's a reference to him by calling it this N. I didn't look it up, of course, because I was like, I didn't think about it until this moment. But like, I was wondering, I was like, is it named after the legendary fighter Mus Musashi Miyamoto? Mm -hmm. Like, I was curious about that. I didn't even know that. That's interesting. Yeah, because he fought like a hundred duels and never lost. And then yeah. one day a peasant came up and dueled him and he won. Like this guy who killed like lords and kings and like all these crazy people and a peasant got him. Wow. And killed him. <laughs> like Imagine that. It's a crazy story. It's like they say the the weakest are the most more dangerous. You know, the ones that are like cowards or they're the it's ones the that can get you. kid in the back that you gotta worry about. <laughs> mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, it's that that guy that sends a letter. He's real suspicious in this film, man. He gave me like a weird vibe right at the bat once I saw him, and I don't remember his name, but uh, let me see. <laughs> <laughs> oh Shinsuke. Shinsuke there you go Shinsuke yeah 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 I had it at the end of my notes yeah I had a look later but um <laughs> he does deliver the letter which is nice and uh we find out that there's like protesting going on against the uh, new government official, Garota Kojima, who I believe is a legendary actor. Mm -hmm. No, I lied. Someone else. No. Uh, he's awesome. I love that guy in this movie. Yeah. Uh, later on... Um, 
Oh, this is... Okay, here's my note about... So, he, uh, after demanding 40% of the takings of all the town vendors, this isn't to do with the river, as I thought, but, um, everyone's, like, protesting about that, and, uh, the boss guy is like, hey, go kill that Sen woman who, uh, who received the letter. Mm-hmm. And Ichi is, like, on the stairs. And they're all coming up be like, get out of the way, blind fool. And he just keeps yeah. knocking people down stairs. Like, it's so funny. So it was this film, then? Yeah. Okay. I just saw it here, and I was like, okay, great. <laughs> it's like, it's off my mystery. There you go. Yeah, and he's given, like, a in the when he's in that village, he's given like an eyeless dar, daruma, and it, it. I mean, he has a lot of comparisons to himself because it, it doesn't have eyes. Oh yeah, so he's like, yeah. And he's like, he so he's like, you're eyeless too, like me. He talks to it pretty much, my little companion or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I really like yeah. that part because the kids also love like that. Yeah, and like. The entire movie, they're like, hey, draw the eyes on the Daruma so you mm-hmm. can see through their eyes. Because they have that, like, childish, you know, wonder, yeah, yeah. magic, and, like, all that. Imagination, all that. And he's like, oh, I don't know if it works that way. And it's like, why don't you try and see? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, that's a real, how could I say it, standout scene right there to me. Because I was like... I don't know. It's kind of gives me castaway vibes with a uh, Wilson <laughs> in a way. Wilson. But it's, yeah, it's like Zatoishi's a uh, Bond here, but with the da- Diorama. I probably said it wrong. Diorama. 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 Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go. I haven't <laughs> seen that movie in it. so long. Me neither. I was like six the last time I saw that. <laughs> uh, I think I was about thirteen with whiskers on my chin. No, I don't know. <laughs> Probably a little older than that, but. Uh, we get an awesome uh, gambling scene. Where, again, he cuts some rated dice in two. And gets the uh, genuine fair dice from the hiding location. And the guy's top knot. Which is awesome. Because... Mm-hmm. The entire scene is uh, looking at Zatuichi's face. And you see him, like, changing his eyes, like, focusing and pecking his ears and, like, all that. Yeah. And then he cuts the guy's top knot and the dice fall. Oh, yeah, I love that part. It's, like, awesome. Yeah, it's... And then he gets his hair in his hand and he's, like, holding it at him. Like, look what I just did to you. You know what I could really do to you? (laughs) And there's a hilarious line where he's like, how many pieces are supposed to be in there? And he's like, oh, two. He's like, oh, you're wrong. And the dice fall, and it's like four pieces. <laughs> We've got a magnet in the middle, something like that. Yeah, it's so funny. But we are taken to the back room where the boss mm. and the legendary actor is. Yes. And they're playing the game Go, which is that super complicated chess game, which I've still, I still don't really know how to play. I have a <laughs> board, but nobody will play yeah. with me because it's like really complicated. Yeah. Like chess is complicated, but like times it by a hundred, and that's Go. Oh man, I suck at chess. Cause I can imagine <laughs> that. But um. The bodyguard who is played by a, who uh, the character's name is Gonosuke, Gonosuke. Good pronunciation, because I have it here, and I'm like, what? <laughs> they all sound the same. <laughs> yeah, so I, I cannot get it. But he's like, hey, Ichi, let's do a uh, a test. And Ichi's like, okay. And they do like quick movements, and the end of uh, Zatuichi's sword handle is cut off. And Ichi is like, uh, can I leave? Because we think he's being, like, cowardly. And he's like, oh, no, I met my match. And after uh-huh. he leaves the room, the go table, which is, like, super thick and wood, 
splits in half and everyone's like, holy shit. <laughs> like, we Dang. underestimated him. I forgot about that. That's crazy. That was an awesome scene. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah, you got the boss in there. I can't pronounce his name either. Gen- Genevieve. <laughs> this is the villain boss. Uh, I probably slaughtered Genbe? that. Genbe? Oh, there you go. <laughs> but he, you should he's definitely got take that... the Duolingo uh, tutorial. <laughs> yes, the I first think so. Because that's what I did, <laughs> and that's all I needed. I didn't want to learn Japanese. I just wanted to learn pronunciation. <laughs> I definitely want to learn, but I'm at the bo- at the bottom of the chain there right now. Same here. I just learned pronunciation, so I was like dusting my hands off. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> so that's <laughs> well, all I but it's wanted. funny. It's funny when they say Zadoichi, because like their eyes open up. That's him. Oh yeah, Zatoichi. That's him. You know. Yeah, there you go. I slaughtered the name again. But... I used to say Zatoichi a lot too, so don't feel bad. Okay, but anyways, <laughs> I'm gonna call him Ichi. <laughs> that works too. That but, is his name. Yeah, so. yeah. Zato is the title. But like, these guys are like, they're right away going cautious. You know, they've heard of him. It's... <laughs> There's a <laughs> really sad scene, though, when uh, Ichi goes to the town bar or the inn, and he meets the mm-hmm. town drunk. And this is something I wanted to yeah. ask him about. We get some behind the scenes of, uh, what's his name? Giju? Giju, something like that, yeah. Yeah. And, no. Wait, is that his name? Yeah, that's his name, Ginju. Ginju. No, Giju was the name of the old man's son. We don't get the old man's name. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. So the old man, we get the story of his lost son who disappeared. And there's a lot of uh, details that are one-to-one yeah. exact with Zatuichi's. Do you think that's the fa- actual father of Zatuichi? My honest opinion... It's never confirmed. Is... At first, I did think that. I said, yes, this is 100% his dad. But my personal opinion is I think he just saw him as a dad. And I think he says that towards the end is I was already ready to put you towards my dad. But then I found out, you know, you ain't that or something like that. But like you said, it's not confirmed. That's just a thought. Because I actually saw him as his father. I mean... And I'm I'm honestly saying that could be true too. I'm just saying. There's reasons for both. That's why I'm yeah. asking because it's not confirmed. I mean, I haven't looked it up either, but like, yeah, there's nothing in the essays to to tell you who's the father because we do get another movie about his background that's also ambiguous. Yeah. But like. I thought he was, and like that's what makes the ending so much more mm-hmm. uh, sad for Zatuichi when uh, his maybe father betrays him. If it is, man, that's going to be more sad to me than with his master, because man, that's his dad. Yeah, because Ichi keeps coming to the end and giving him alcohol when he knows he's a town drunk. I think he's desperate for him to be like, oh yeah, I do actually know who my son is. He's some blind fool, you know, uh-huh. like while he's super drunk. So he gets the confirmation, but he doesn't. He never gets the confirmation. It's like, okay, the story is not kinda, very much the same, but we don't know. Yeah, and he kind of says like, I, I lost my son. I lost him. I couldn't find him. It was like and 40 he's like, years ago. Similar to 30 me. years ago. Yeah. So that's that's a pretty big hint there. Like I I really couldn't get into that because like you said it don't explain it. But a part of me says maybe, and then a part of me says no. So I don't. I'm I'm stuck in between. We need to go track down Shintaro Katsu and ask him. <laughs> I think he's still alive. Take him to Mary. What's that show? Mari or Mori? <laughs> you are the father. <laughs> oh my god! And they're fighting each other. Yeah. Oh, no, he died in 1997. Okay, we can't ask him. Oh, damn. Oh, wow, there's a bunch of pictures of him, like, with his eyes open. And, like, being himself. God, he died when he was 65. Damn. Wow. That's sad. 
It's kind of young still. Died of cancer, apparently. Yeah. At that cancer hospital. And I, I actually rooted for him in the film till you know what happens. I I totally forgot that his maybe father betrayed him, and that like that was just like so sad. Yeah, it's could be the that's why he lives the way he does too. Drown his sorrows, because mm -hmm. what happens is that he uh, asks his maybe father to take. Uh, the woman from Daimajin and all those movies and the voice of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer to take her out of town, like, just <laughs> grab her. And between that moment and them getting captured, we get a scene where he's, like, being devious. Like, there's a facial expression he gives because uh -huh. she can't see. So he's like, oh, like, he looks, like, mean for, like, half a second. So blink and you miss it. But he's like, oh, yeah. I'm gonna. How do you catch that? I'm gonna make some money off of Ichi, because there's a bounty on this woman, and Ichi just handed her over to me, and so she gets locked up, and the two boys yeah. see her get locked up, and so they have like a lookout system. They're like competent, keeping tabs mm -hmm. on the woman and the drunk, the town drunk, maybe father. Uh, that's why I love those boys, man. They're awesome in this film. Yeah, they were great. <laughs> like, I was shocked. Yeah. Because as I said, I hate kids in general in movies. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. The Goonies is like the only one where I really like the kids. Because they act like kids. But mm -hmm. it's also like Samwise Gamgee from The Lord of the Rings. He's in that. Sean Astin. <laughs> so, yeah. And uh, Corey yeah. Feldman. So. Yeah. I gotta ask you, do you like the kids in It? No. In no. the new one or the old one, I hate them. <laughs> Other than the new one, they're okay. They're pretty good. Yeah. Like, I kinda like that like, one. That behind the scenes, all. they're pretty good. Like, I just hate the movies in general because they rely a little too much <laughs> on jump scares, which I think is the laziest yeah. form of horror, in my opinion. <laughs> it's a lot of it now. So, oh, yeah. We what talking, part were we at? We were talking about the kids and how they were actually competent. <laughs> oh, okay. So yeah, they they're just entertaining. <laughs> I could see the acrobats too. So there's a couple scenes of them like just doing backflips and like cartwheels, yeah, and all that stuff. And they give uh, Zatuichi the uh, dirame. Which I didn't write down, I should have. But they give him the little statue thing. And it's like, hey, if you draw eyes on this, you will be able to see. And it's like really sweet. Like, yeah. It's not annoying kids. I hate annoying kids. <laughs> like in these films. <laughs> it's like the most family, I think, family filled movie out of the. So far. Yeah, I can't remember uh, any after this. Because the last movie was the baby, and in this movie is the two boys. So, like, I wonder what was happening during this time of, like, making these movies where Shitaru Katsu and everyone else was like, let's have kids in this movie. Let's have a baby. Like, <laughs> maybe his son was born around this time. L later on, it'll be Lone Wolf and Cub. I have a feeling I need to rewatch those. Yeah, oh, me too. I, I watched them and... They don't disappoint. They're more dark than this series, I'd say, right now. Yeah. I'm not going to say overall. I don't think it really gets that dark, like, in the series. No. But it also has been, like, three or four years since I've seen it. Because you, you go to Lone Wolf and Cub, it's like, it's time this kid. Choose the sword or choose the ball. Either, you know, meet your oh, fate. Yeah. It's really dark in those films. And then, and he's like, I'm going down the path with demons or something. I don't know. It's demons. It's like, it's really dark. Oh, yeah. In the final movie, they fight ghosts and stuff. Yeah. Well, like, I guess his path of killing, he's saying he's walking the pretty much the road to hell. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And he's, he's telling his, he keeps telling his son over and over, you don't want to walk this path, but he chose it. And we're walking with the demons. This ain't a, 
This is in. I'm not a good guy. He's right away putting out. The anti-hero. Yeah. So, and these films, Ichi is. He's not a good guy either, but he has more of a kind. I don't know if I'd say kind heart, maybe. I, I. This is what I was talking about in the first movie. Is that he is a bad person in the beginning. In each movie, he's trying to repent and make, mm -hmm. you know, good on all the bad that he's done. So, I think that's what makes this movie and the eighth movie with the baby so powerful. Is that he's yeah. working with the kids and, you know, using, not using them in terms of, like, manipulating. But he's making them feel more confident in themselves. You know, and doing yeah, all these yeah. tasks and rescuing um, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. I forgot her name. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> me too. Uh, Saki. Yeah, that's right. Alcohol. Saki. Um, it's after the alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that was a joke. but um. Yeah, Miss Saki. Yeah. <laughs> Drink some Saki. <laughs> Can we uh, see him in the scene? I'm like, I want some Saki. I want to try it. I've never had any. I don't have any, like, drive to. I know it's, like, basically, <laughs> like, vodka. Like, it's that, like, oh, man. potent. Yeah. Looks like vodka. It's clear. Yeah. But, um, to finish out <laughs> this movie. Yeah. Um, he does eventually free Saki. Who, uh, he uses the boys to like figure out how to get them out. Tells them to not come near this when he's like mowing down everybody at this checkpoint because it is a like government checkpoint. So it's like yeah, hundreds of guards. people. There's guards. It's like heavily protecting. He just walks in, starts killing people, rescues her, and is like, "Boys, I can hear you." And they come out, and they're like. He's like, I'm not going to punish you or anything. Like, you're here. There's nothing we can do about that. Take Saki and get out. <laughs> yeah. And that's the last that they see each other, which is interesting. Yeah, there's a scene there where he uh, he finds out. He goes to visit the old man when he betrayed him. And he's leaving. And, like, there's guys outside. And he just, the swords go through the door. And he closes the door. I mean, the door's open. And then oh, yeah. he senses, like, closes the door, and then the swords go through. And that's when he just slices them up. He's like, he already knew they were there before he could even, <laughs> you know, they could even figure it out themselves. We get an awesome scene where they're fighting in the snow, and he kills, like, dozens of people. Oh, yeah. And he fights uh, Rising Sun, Japanese guy, super yeah. important guy. I love that. And I love the snow. Yeah. And I just really love that scene. Like, it was really dramatic. Yeah, it reminds me of Lady Snowblood in a lot of ways. Yeah. Not as much snow, but it has that feel to it. I mean, it is the same director, I think. Most of these movies were made by uh, that director, who went on to do Lone Wolf and Cub. Yeah, it's like I, I told you I'm a sucker for those settings, and that snow just sets it off. And then there's a, there's a, also I wanted to bring up, there's a thumping sound in the background, like a sound when he's about to battle that I, it reminded me of like vigilante movies in a way. Yeah. How I, you'd see now. I think that was him, his heart, wasn't it? Like he could hear his heart or well, somebody's heart. I don't know. You just, you just hear like a boom, 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 oh, okay. like that. And you're like, oh my God. I'm like, here we go. This is what I want. <laughs> sat up in your chair <laughs> yeah i was up like man that sound is awesome reminds me of like death wish or like i, I said those type of so films <laughs> man that's what it gave me those vibes like you just hear if you pay attention there in that last those last scenes it's just a it's a beat it's a it's a pretty much a score but you just hear like boom it's like i don't like drums tapping something like that I'm going off here blabbering, but. Like I said, the score makes these films even more. 
more intense. Yeah, I mean, just to kind of close it out, which one was your favorite of these four? Oh, okay, let's see. <laughs> oh, you man. You weren't ready I, I enjoyed them all. But... Man. I'm looking through the notes here. They all tie together for me. Like, yeah. I love eight and nine the most. It's definitely between those uh -huh. two. Like for me. I'm gonna have to go with uh this is hilarious, but six and nine. Yeah. Six through nine or six and nine? S six and nine. Six I really like six because of the gore. Yeah. Yeah, because we had a couple uh, hoses uh, go off <laughs> in that movie. No, that, that, that's what I like, is hoses of blood. I'm going to go with six and nine, but I enjoyed them all. You didn't have eight up there? Come on. <laughs> Man, eight. Eight is really so good. so touching. It's like... I don't know. I, I have it next, for sure. <laughs> it's number three on four. <laughs> like I said, I'm a sucker for snow. That's why nine's up there. Yeah, I really love that end scene when they all fight, and it's like dozens. Yeah, literally. boom. That boom. that boom. Like I don't know, just gets me into the film. But loved them all. But I'm not stay with a six, nine, <laughs> eight, right there. It's eight and six, neck to neck. They're all really good. Okay, let's not downplay that. I mean, they uh, are really fucking good. This this was a good, good batch of films right here. Like I was shocked, like, because again, I don't remember any of them, but this would probably be a good time to uh, discuss this. But our next um, few movies that we're watching are, uh, as I slowly find my thumbnail that has the titles uh we are doing movies 10 through 13 we're in double digits now the movies are Zatoichi's revenge which i don't remember anything about Zatoichi and the doomed man which is 11 Zatoichi and the chess expert that was the one i loved if you remember in the first episode i was like mm -hmm. oh yeah this movie's great <laughs> like get ready for that Look forward to it. And then 13 is Zatoichi's Vengeance. So there's two movies that basically mean the same title-wise. Zatoichi's Revenge and Zatoichi's Vengeance. But I'm really excited for this next batch because I remember nothing. In this batch, at least, I was like, oh, baby film, two kids. <coughs> uh, Chessigal. <laughs> <laughs> Like in this, I yeah. only remember Chess Expert, and I love that one. So, just hearing you there, I'm excited. So yeah, that's it. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Thank you, Leon, for joining today. Thank you for having me. <laughs>